We all have gone through situations in school and work in which we are supposed to memorize something, but rarely does someone tell us how to do it. This is not without good reasons. There is no such thing as memorizing. We can think, we can repeat, we can recall, and we can imagine, but we aren't built to memorize. Rather, our brains are designed to think and automatically hold on what's important. While running away from your friendly neighbor ta tiger, we don't think, you need to remember this, tigers are bad, don't forget, they are bad. We simply run away, and our brain remembers for us. The closest mental action that we have to memorizing is practicing recall. Now we need to investigate precisely what effective recall feels like. Try to recall the foreign words that have shown up so far in this book. You will remember some words immediately, perhaps the words from the previous section, El Tigre and El Dentista. If you keep looking, you will find a few more in relatively easy reach. Perhaps Gato is still lurking about. Last, hiding in the murky fog of your brain, a few words may reluctantly emerge. If you were to track your ability to remember each of these words, we will see a curious result. By next week, you are most likely to forget the words you knew best. Those words that you remembered immediately. You are 20% more likely to retain the words that took a little more time. But the words that took the most of the recall, those you had all but forgotten, will each themselves deeply into your consciousness. You are 75% more likely to remember them in the future, and if they spend a few moments just out the reach of the reach at the tip of your tongue, then you are twice as likely to remember them. What's going on here? Let's look at the most extreme example. A word that dances on the tip of your tongue before you finally recall it. A word like this is an incomplete memory. You have access to fragments of the word, but you can't see the whole picture yet. Yet you can recall that it starts with the letter S, or it is something like a poem or monologue, or it, that it sounds like solipsist or solitaire, but you need to time to reach the word soliki. More often than not, in these situations, we recall accurate information. Our word does start with the letter S. Our brains flies into a, a wild, almost desperate search for the missing piece of our minds. Frantically, generating S words and throwing them out when they don't match what we are looking for. Your amygdala treats these searches as matters of life and death. For surely, if you don't remember the actor who played Matt Damon's therapist in Good Will Hunting, you will leap out of the nearest window. You experience such relief at the final finding your goal that the word becomes nearly impossible to forget. How do we take advantage of this? Do we even want to? Tricking our brains into a permanent, desperate chase after missing words sounds taste stressful. Doing this a hundred times a day sounds like a recipe for early heart failure. Fortunately, we don't need to be stressed to remember. We just need to be interested. We will get bored if we spend our days incessantly asking ourselves whether we still remember our friend Edward's name. It is too easy, it is tedious, and it doesn't work very well. If we wait longer until we are just about to forget, then remembering Edward's names become a stimulating challenge. We are aiming for the point where a dash of difficulty will provide just the right amount of spice and keep the game interesting. If we can find it, we will get twice as much benefit for our time, and we will have much more fun in the process. Key points Memory tests are most effective when they are challenging. The closer you get to forgetting a word, the more ingrained it will become when you finally remember it. If you can consistently test yourself right before you forget, you will double the effectiveness of every test.